Well, it's, it's terrific to be back. I can't believe it's just a year since I was here before. We're so used to thinking of history as being just about people over the last few hundred years. And it seems to me that actually history is a whole lot more than that. And really more interesting when you think of humanity and human history in context of other species and the planet and going right back millions of years to see where uh, human history really unfolds. And in what on earth happened, I used chronology. I used a clock, a 24-hour day, to try and give an idea that when human history comes in, just the last second to midnight. Uh, and whilst I was writing that book, uh, it occurred to me that there were actually other ways of tying knowledge together, of tying evolution and human culture together. And one of them would be quite fun to take humanity, one species, and set it into the context of others that have been really successful and that had a dramatic impact on the planet, life, and people. So I thought, well, let's choose 100 species, of which humans, you and I, are one. And let's choose 50 species that evolved before humans uh, evolved themselves. Okay, 50 species that represent the wild. So everything from the beginning of life, viruses, bacteria, through to prehistoric fish and dinosaurs and the emergence of mammals, arriving at man, and let's understand the world without us. How does nature operate where there are no people? And then I thought, let's take the second 50 species, are things that have really thrived and been successful as a result of people, particularly over the last 10,000 years as we've started farming and we started selecting things like crops and domestic animals and we started choosing things and growing them in our gardens because they look good or they taste good or they do fuzzy things to our heads. Whatever it may be, those are things that have become very successful in the last 10,000 years. I'm just going to focus on the first 50 species, and I'm going to invite David to come up and uh, take his seat. And I have to say, this is going to be a very special moment, because we've had one rehearsal so far this afternoon on this. <laughs> and this whole presentation is full of two ingredients, spontaneity and risk, which are replete <laughs> in the natural world, I can tell you. Influenza anthrax, pseudomonas and Breaking party virus, Norway spruce and vine. Just a harmless happy end, not erectus, not archaeopteryx, not astralopithecus. What on earth, what on earth, what on earth he What on earth? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to advance the slide so everybody can see where we're going here. This is species number 74. Perfect example of collaboration. Excellent. Uh. Uh, a little evil laugh. <laughs> How are you feeling, Linda? How are you feeling? All right. Now, all I want you to do is to dip your hands, I've got a little bowl here. Dip your hands in there and just slosh them around and try and guess what the species is, OK? Just okay. use your sense of touch, you know, give it a real, girl, that's it. <laughs> wow, what's that? Give it a real, what do you think? Give, give me a few adjectives. Mm, How's it feel? Okay, uh, slimy. Yes, fantastic, in one. That's brilliant, right? You can take off your blindfold, and that's absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. Well, look at that, lovely slime. Yeah, so a round of applause. Thank you for Linda. That's great. We'll take that back. Super. That was really good to get that in one. That's just super. Now, slime, slime molds weren't uh, known about much until the 1930s, and they were discovered in some woods, uh, but they've become a really classic species for scientific study uh, in the last uh, 50, 60 years because they have this amazing life cycle because they're, uh, naturally they're only tiny little single-celled amoeba-like uh, creatures, which you can hardly see. But, uh, and then they, they feed off bacteria and other types of microbes. But when food gets short, they gather together and they collaborate and they turn into a multicellular organism, a slug. And then they can find food more easily because if some of them finds food at one end, they can just pass it along and feed everybody that's in the middle, etc. You see, so that's a great example of collaborative living. And there was a, a Japanese guy in the year 2000 who did this amazing experiment where he said, I have demonstrated the earliest form of intelligent life. I can show it to you with this slime mold. And he took some slime mold and he put lots of blobs of slime in a maze. And at the exits of the maze, he put some food. And within about two hours, 
The slime had gathered together and created itself into a slug so it could forage for the food and pass it along through all its different individual cells which had joined up. And in so doing, of course, it had solved the puzzle of the quickest way through the maze. I've chosen a species here. There are quite a lot of aggressive ones in our table. The one I've chosen here is number 38, as it happens. And I've got a little something in, my, in this box here. And I just want someone to, to guess what this is. Everybody knows it's a shark's tooth. Fantastic. It's not just any old shark's tooth, actually. This is a 100 million year old shark's tooth. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Now, do you know what this is here? <laughs> See one of those? Right. I'm going to give this 10 pound note to someone who can tell me where I got this 100 million year old shark's tooth from. That's a lovely idea. Who was that who said that? Absolutely not, but thank you so much. It's very kind. Um, uh, who said that? Oh, no. I, I genuinely believed I was going to keep that note all year. And I know that man. I know that man. You're a marked man. eBay, great for finding fossils, I have to say. Much easier than pottering down to Lyme Regis or something. Fantastic. OK, so, and it's quite pyramid shaped. I thought that was quite neat too, isn't it? Sharks too. So, sharks are absolutely here on the table, number 38. There are lots of really interesting things about sharks. They evolved about 400 million years ago in the sea. There's something very gruesome I wanted to just share with you called oophagy. Has anybody heard of oophagy? Some of you may have. Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's a way of ensuring that your offspring are very, very aggressive. And it's not done by all sharks, but some sharks do it. And it's that they give birth to their, the females give birth to their offspring inside their bodies, uh, usually about eight. And the idea is that whilst the sharks are inside the mother's uh, body, uh, they eat each other, except for one, who's the one who's left standing at the end or swimming or whatever. And then that one gets born. Ah. So that's a rather neat way of ensuring that the most aggressive ones are the ones that are born, okay? So that is oophagy for you as an example of uh, competition in the wild.